the channel, it's Mark from Phoenix One to One and PowerSonic and today I'm doing an EICR for a letting agent and I wanted to pop on and do a, a quick video of um, the inspections that you would be doing during that process and um, you know this isn't a full on EICR, there's videos out there already of people doing that um, you know Nick Bundy's got some out there, Tom Nagy's done some and uh, CJ Artisan, there's loads of stuff but I wanted to cover a little bit more about the actual inspection process and not necessarily um, to do with the schedule of inspections, but more the initial walk around and the importance of that. Um, sometimes that gets overlooked and you just kind of end up tunnel vision, going through an inspection without taking proper care and attention when you first walk into a place of having an actual good look around and seeing what you're faced with. And to start with, I always start at the beginning. And in this case, it's outside. So we'll go and have a look out here already. I've got my lovely Nipex keys and let's see what we've got in here. Okay, we'll make that a bit wider. So you can see here we've got a TNCS head. It says on there there's a 100 amp main uh, fuse in there. You can see the seals are actually cut um, so we'll find out why that might be shortly. And the tails again going through the meter cupboard and, and inside to the other side of this wall but at least we know we've got an earth connection there and we can uh, have a look at that in a bit start at the beginning and while we're out here we'll have a little look at the gas uh, smaller key for that one Let's see if I can find it there we go and we can see there's a there's a bonding cable on there and obviously we can take a measurement as well that looks like a fairly recent clamp actually on there tight enough. So we can have a better look at that later on, but at least we know it's there. And then yeah, before I get too far into anything, I'll just have a good walk around the whole property and um, see exactly what you're faced with. So you can count up all of your accessories and check for the condition of them. So you can see here, and this seems consistent throughout the property, that we've got brass fittings, so metal accessories, so we need to be checking we've got earths especially on the lights up where the sockets would have them. Uh, properties from around the year 95 I'm told. Um, I actually think it's probably older than that but that's, that's what they're reckoning. And again we've got the brass switches. So you can see you've got your two way switching so I would always make sure they're always wor working correctly especially if there's a, an intermediate switch somewhere they often get wired incorrectly. And then yeah, just have a good look around, see exactly what you're faced with. So again, we've got metal accessories in here. Someone's popped a little plastic one on over there. So that's one's going to be worth a look at, I think, already. For when we're doing internal inspections later on in this process. And yeah, again, you can see the light fittings. So you would expect that all of these would have CPCs in with the property not being that old. But we need to make sure that they're all in place and connected as we run through the EICR. So we're just looking for any obvious damages and how the installation's actually used on this first walk around. And if you look in Guidance Note 3, that's one of the key aspects it tells you to be doing. Um, and certainly in larger, more complex installations, is before you just start diving in. Sorry about that, we just had the letting agent pop in to have a quick look around and get some pictures before the new occupiers move in. Again, you see there's an outside light just through this door. I'll show you around outside. Actually, we'll zoom out a little bit. I'll show you around outside so you can see everything out there in a bit. We've got a light switch for in here and one for outside. A little socket down there. And again, that's a white plastic one. Doesn't look especially square. So that's been replaced at some stage. We'll have a, have a look at that one for sure. And again, we've got a mix of white plastic and the old brass fronts in here. Uh, someone's done a bit of inventive wiring for the old telephone TV cable in. Uh, that's not the best. And then uh, more white plastic switches and sockets. So again, you can just be having a look through to get all the locations of your, your switches and stuff. Make sure you know where everything is. Your two-way switches, as I mentioned before, and that your sockets and uh, switches, you're counting them up as you go around. I would usually have a little notepad out just with a little tick sheet so you get a good... Um, idea of what's in each room and then obviously when you come to your testing you can figure out what's on what circuit. So I think we already looked at this room. In the kitchen, got a cooker, electric cooker, uh, 
Again, we looked at that already, didn't we? One thing with the extractor, always check that these are working both with extract and the lights. So pop them on. That one's going off here. And again, you'll see here someone's fitted some LED battens in quite recently. Uh, so there has been work in this property. I'll turn that off because it'll be strobing away, no doubt. We've got a little ensuite down here just with a not on sweet, a little uh, toilet downstairs and uh, just a light in there, nothing else. One thing I will say is when you're in kitchens and bathrooms, always check in the cupboards because you might have a, a little electric heater plug that's in there with, in a kickboard that you've missed or there could be um, a shaver point somewhere in a cabinet. Always check your bonding as well, so we've got the water bond under there. And again, we'll make sure that that is actually continuous back to the consumer unit, although you'll see the actual mark, that's a plastic pipe coming in and that goes back to an earlier version of the regs because even um, when that used to be the case we still had to put a bond on the copper pipe work now as that's not introducing an extraneously conductive part we wouldn't have to bond that anymore because it's a plastic service so it's not introducing an earth potential to the property uh, but the bond's still on there from a uh, prior version of the regs and we've got the fridge there so we'll have a little look outside and I'll show you upstairs. So again, when you're outside, it's always worth checking fully around the entire property. So start with that side and you'll see here we've got a bit of twin and sin outside. And that's for that light up there and the photo cell. And you can see it probably pops out to this socket and then it's uh, quite a tidy job actually to a fuse spare and onto a switch. Obviously the twin and sin is uh, going to be suffering UV damage you can see actually we've got a bit of damage in the foot, uh, PIR anyway, the cover's broken. So that's going to need some attention. Uh, the lights themselves don't look especially new. Again, we'll have a little look down this side. We'll go out the back door in a bit and I'll show you around the front. There's another light over there and I don't know if you can see in the distance there's a bit of twin and sin on there too. That's outside. There's no garden building or anything, so there's no hot tub or shed electrics to be worrying about. We'll have a little pop upstairs. And again, this video is a, a walk around of your basic inspections. It's always worth putting a bit of time into it. So like I said in the bathroom, there's no electric shower in here. Always checking any cupboards just to see if there's a shaver point. We've just got the central light fitting that's been recently changed with the looks of it. A couple of pendants up here. Uh, a little accessory point there that's worth checking. I think that's for a burglar alarm that was never installed after the property was built. Again, your light switches all on landing. Check your smoke alarm dates. Always good practice to do that. And again, in the bedrooms, we've got a mixture of the old brass white plastic I suspect the brass ones have probably failed at some stage and they've replaced them with white plastic you know this is a rental property maybe some damage or other and uh, they've just swapped them over so these are ones we're gonna have a look at we'll have a look at quite a few of these and this is one of the times you can determine your rate of sampling so I mean in a domestic premises um, you know you can usually look around most of the accessories and switches without too much issue, but you do need to keep in mind, actually I can take this off now because the letting agent's gone. <laughs> Just been walking around muffled. Um, you can, oh well, I lost my train of thought. You can have a good look around and see exactly what's going on in most of the accessories. Um, so you know, you would always try and do that, but sometimes, I mean, this one's got quite a lot actually. There's um, 22 sockets downstairs, and I think there's about 15 upstairs. And if you start dismantling to that point, you can put time pressure on yourself and end up um, introducing a fault that maybe wasn't there in the first place. So you need to set a sampling size based on your understanding of the installation. If you think it needs a, a bigger sampling size because you're finding issues, always do that. Um, if you find that it's in actual good order and um, what you're finding looks pretty decent, you can agree the sample size with the um, person responsible for the installation and um, perfectly acceptable to do that. In, gives you that guidance within GN3. If you go and have a look in there, you can do it. And you need to remember with the periodic 
we're trying to determine if the installation is safe for continued use. We're not performing initial verification. It's up to you as the inspector to decide how you come to that conclusion and if you follow the model form to the EICR document, carry out your tests based on that and um, do your inspections to a reasonable level. I mean 100% externally is something you should be doing anyway and this is the purpose of the walk around. Um, so it's taken me longer than it would normally take because I'm trying to chat you through it I guess. Um, but then you take your approach to internal inspection so we're going to open up a few of the accessories and have a look inside them. Uh, there's no real set room for, rule for how you come to that decision on exactly what you are and aren't going to look at. Uh, but again you've got the issue of decoration in a lot of places so if you take every single switch and accessory off in a property um, you're going to be pulling chunks of paint off um, which is unnecessary so you know you need to factor in all of those things in your engineering judgment and while you're doing your walk around you know that can help form your opinion and on this one I'm probably going to pop a couple of accessories off in every room and have a look inside them and certainly all the ones that are now white plastic as well just to make sure they've not been swapped over by tenants and uh, done in a bit of a shady way. We've got a little ensuite in here as well and again no electric shower turn that light off because we're getting flicker um, so yeah we've just got the light up there and the fans so again check all your fans run you know that one buzzing away there it's on a separate switch you need to check that you've got it fused down if it needs to be so that you have uh, the appropriate isolation and I know they're in they're in the wood cupboard that's all good so I've got a cupboard on this side with the uh, fan controls and then there's an old tank cupboard here and you can see where the immersion would have used to have been supplied from and probably pumps and such that's all gone now there's a combi boiler so we'll have a look at that and make sure it's been made safe appropriately I'm sure it has the other thing while I was in the other, other room always check inside built-in wardrobes sometimes you can just think oh, it's a wardrobe and, and not look but you often can find some uh, shady wiring for lighting them up that DIYs and such have had a go at so it's always worth checking for that and again this room's been swapped to white plastic and because they're all swapped that was probably just a decision um, when it was decorated and again with your pendants make sure you're checking that the cords are incorrectly you haven't got any basic insulation on show you're just giving everything a thorough health check as you're wandering around and looking for anything that might need a further inspection you can see up there that one's not quite back flush to the wall so we need to have a look at that one again that's the isolator for that bathroom We've both got them. The other one was in that cupboard. It's all switched from there. So the, in the garage, again, we've got some two-way switching. I'll take you outside in a second to show you around the front. But we've got a, a switch on this side, which does an outside light. And again, it, it's going out in twin and CPC, twin and earth, twin and sin, whatever you want to call it. Uh, and again, it's exposed to UV. There doesn't appear to be any damage to it. So it would just be coded as a C3 for me. Um, if it was starting to show signs of uh, breaking down, obviously you'd code it appropriately. Uh, but this isn't especially old and it's not been particularly damaged by the UV as yet. Of course it will be at some stage. Again, check your two-way switching works. We've got a replacement board up here. This obviously isn't original to the installation, not changed over by us. Uh, I'm not going to lift the cover up and, and show, actually I'd like to, but it's got the contractor's label on and I don't want to take it off, just let me cover that up, uh, put my hand over it. So you'll see there it's a split load board and they've been good enough to leave a little uh, circuit chart up there so we can see exactly what's what, what the cable sizes are, how many of the accessories are at the point they did this in 2019. I've got a bell transformer in the end there. And then a split of the circuits. And it's actually been, I mean, I'm not a huge fan of the RCBO boards. I'll just keep the camera there so we can't see that label. Um, sorry, I'm not a fan of the split load boards. I much prefer an RCBO one. Uh, but this has actually been done with a bit of thought because we've got the ground floor lighting with the first floor sockets on one side and the first floor lighting with the ground floor sockets. So there is a bit of a split there. So if you lose one RCD, you're still going to have power on uh, each floor essentially, while well, somebody came to reset it, but ideally uh, I'd like to see our CBOs more often than not, but we've got to be realistic in rental property, this is what you're going to be finding in, in some of the better situations and in some of the worst ones, rewirable fuses and uh, rubberized cable. So we've got a nice new boiler there, and again we can see um, the bonding conductor for the gas, 
So that, I would assume, loops across the, the ceiling void there, drops down and then punches out into the gas meter box the other side of this wall. And again, I'm just checking all the accessories I wander around, see if there's any cracks or damages to them. And, and these all look pretty decent. They're of an age where they're, they're scratched and they're a bit scuffed. Certainly some of the brass ones, but they're not broken. So we can do all the functional checks on that as well. Just have a little wander around the front. And you can see here we've got that twin and earth I was talking about at the garage outside light. And again, a little light at the front there. Nothing more exciting than that, really. This is the other oh, the sun's right in my eyes. There is it, the other twin and earth feeding up to that security light. Uh, so yeah, it's a nice, nice property. You know, this is a nice, uh, it's a nice location in the town I actually live. I wasn't supposed to be coming out doing this today. I was in the office, um, but they've had a, they've had what's been termed. A domestic visual inspection report that's been carried out and because of the new PRS rules and there wasn't an installation certificate for the board change in the possession of the current owner I think it changed ownership early in 2020 and um, yeah they didn't have copies of those certificates so the landlord arranged for the, what they thought was the thing they needed and the letting agent seen it and decided that that isn't what's needed so the domestic um, inspection report, they want a full EICR um, on the property so that all of the right documentation is in place. And as the letting agent, that's their prerogative if they're going to manage the property. So they've asked us to come in and take a look. And uh, yeah, that's what I'll be doing now. So I've jumped on it because there's an uh, Occupy here moving in tomorrow. So we need to get on with it and get that sorted. There'll be a few little remedials, the PIR sensor outside as one but generally speaking you know it's in good nick so what i'm going to do now is i'm going to knock the power off carry out safe isolation and you'll have heard me speak about that on all of my videos so far if you're ever working around electrical systems make sure you are performing safe isolation and locking off um, this is just me here i've got the keys to the door i can lock them all and everything but i will lock off make sure it's properly isolated and then i'm going to go around and open up some accessories and if i find anything interesting i might show you on the video if not just assume that it was all okay. Uh, I'm not going to run through the far end of a fart on an EICR because I know it's been covered tenfold and you know how many times can you show an electrical video of someone inspecting a property. But I didn't think anyone had, had started with the actual basic walk around, probably because it's considered not interesting and very boring. Uh, but I think it's important, you know, we need to reference that that's the base we work from. That's where you set the rest of the procedure up. So you set your sample sizes, um, you give a good feel of the installation and what you need to be looking at and where and also that when you're coming to do your testing you, you've got a good image in your mind of where everything is I mean this one's quite straightforward there's no furniture in it but you imagine this is occupied and there's switches and sockets behind sofas and furniture and, and all the rest of it and some of it's not going to be accessible some of it will be so having a good wander around for just 20 minutes half an hour or so and get a good feel of it. And that's the other important thing of carrying out EICRs while we're on that subject, because it's been a bit of a hot topic on um, LinkedIn this last week, where um, a group of electricians had put a marketing piece up trying to draw clients to their business to do with um, electrical installation condition reports. And there was questions from electricians about that marketing, and, and some of it um, wasn't particularly pleasant was you know quite aggressive and <laughs> really out of order uh, the actual poster handled it really well i have to say i thought they, they dealt with it you know really 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 well but it's just that assumption in the domestic rental market that you know these eicrs are worthless they're not being done correctly landlords and letting agents are just looking for the cheapest and you know what's the point and it, it's all it's also negative isn't it it's all you know it's not it's not a true reflection of everything that's out there because there is a lot of good landlords and letting agents and a lot of good electricians who are just trying to do their job, keep properties safe. Um, you know, you will always find those bad eggs who are just looking for a bit of paper and a certificate and the people who will give those to them. And it's immensely frustrating as electricians that that is going on. Um, but you can't take that anger out on every single piece of marketing you see. And at the end of the day, the original person to that, in my opinion, actually has you know um 
recourse through defamation of character and you know they've had their business reputation damaged by others uh, in a way that wasn't factually correct their clients could see that you know and wonder is that is there something going on here that that person's not doing a good job i just think sometimes we need to be mindful of um, each other's businesses mindful of our own jobs and keeping the wider society safe in the domestic sector that's the ultimate aim of these eicis to keep property safe but just be kind to each other. Don't always jump onto the, the bandwagon and knock in everything that you see. It doesn't, it's not productive. It doesn't get you anywhere. It doesn't change anything at all. I think sometimes we can get lost in our own importance of people actually listening to anything we say when really we're just in a, a, an echo chamber shouting about stuff and, and no one's listening and nothing's happening. So, you know, my approach is to directly get your boots on the ground go and engage with electricians out there, try and help them raise their knowledge and awareness and just show some respect and kindness and support to other people. And in my own business to try and uh, carry out EICS correctly, train uh, my employees to do the same and share that message with my clients and customers uh, and anyone else who wants to listen. Uh, but you'd never find me on someone else's social media content trying to slay it, especially when there's no context. I just think that is really out of line and there's some apologies due from certain people and um, I won't see them because I'm blocked. <laughs> it's ironic there's quite a few people who've, who've blocked me on social media I don't mind talking about it because I find it all all quite childish I'm not sure exactly what I've done other than be um, friends with people who who other people don't like you know it just seems like such childish behavior doesn't it it's like not you know especially in the the times we are now why, why are we you know why are, we, why are we going to such silly lengths to upset each other? I don't get it. Um, and while I'm not hugely upset by it because it's just social media, it doesn't really matter, but some of these people I've supported in the past in their aims and goals, and to see them behave in the way they have towards myself has been disappointing. That's, that's all I'll say, right, disappointing. But yes, anyway, back on with the video. That was a little semi-rant there about what I've been observing to do with. EICRs, particularly in the domestic um, rental market, we carry out EICRs on some huge industrial and commercial premises as well. This is not the sole um, means of business for us, but we do get involved with it. We do look after some letting agents' properties, and I really enjoy it. Some of the most interesting installations you will see, and you will also meet some of the most interesting people as well. And um, that's why I still enjoy coming out and taking care of these little bits and pieces when I can. So I'm going to have a wander around now and I'll jump back on the video if I find anything interesting. Right, so I thought I'd jump back on. I've got the installation safely isolated now and um, we're locked off. Everything's nice and uh, safe. So I've opened up a few accessories. Uh, I can't really show you much of the consumer unit really um, whilst I do any testing. I'll pop a picture up of the internals of the consumer unit because it's actually wired really nicely. And again, as I show you some of these accessories, I'm sure watching you'll start to see how I formed my opinion that the guys installing this were of a good quality. Um, the consumer unit, although it's been replaced, it's still been replaced in a tidy fashion, probably because the original uh, board was also in, in good order. You know, you like to follow that on where you can and don't introduce a rat's nest where there isn't one. And the installer who swapped that consumer unit has done a grand job. And you'll see that in the picture. But anyway, we'll jump around these accessories. And you'll see here we've got some uh, strappers and they're sleeved. We've got earth in the back box. And again, there's there's not a lot of, if any, copper exposed at the termination. So that's always nice to see. Uh, the earth would be better if they were separated rather than all in the same sleeving. But they don't appear to be twisted together. I'll find out when I come to do a bit of testing. And again, on this socket front over here, you can see the quality of the wiring, you know, it's been dressed nicely. Um, again, the earth sharing the same sleeving, which is common for properties on this estate. So I already am fam pretty familiar with the, the level of installation in these houses because we've tested quite a few of them over the years. Um, and the actual contractors of these new builds were good. You know, very rarely any issues with the original installation. You see there we've got one mil on the lighting and again the same sleeving on the CPCs. It would have been nice if we had a bit of fire seal in the hull coming through, but at the time of these been built, I don't think that was a requirement. Obviously, we can pop that on our 
report it's not there again this socket here was one i was suspicious of and there was no real need to be because it's it's wired nicely there's not a lot of exposed copper if at all the back box is moving a little bit deep into the wall but this is a timber extension well porch and they've brick clad it so it's maybe a little bit awkward to get on but yeah i'll jump around the rest of the property i'll open a few more things up if i find anything of note I will show you but chances are it's just going to be be like this and then when I come to do the tests we'll we'll see what I get I'll probably um, just talk about it rather than show it going on and again because I'm filming this on my phone I haven't come prepared with tripod or uh, the gimbal or anything like that it's um, just me holding my phone trying to wander around and, and get as much content as I can because I thought this would be a good one to show you and we are focusing more on the inspection, so um, yeah, we'll uh, we'll maybe have a little look through the um, certificate once it's complete, and some of the codes I've put forward as well based on the observations. So we'll maybe do that. Um, but yeah, I can't really, I can't really get on my steps, hold my smartphone, use the MFT, and get test readings. You know, it's not not really practical in the time I've got on site. So I'm going to have to get a wriggle on and get on with this now. And uh, yeah, I'll jump back when the search ready. And uh, if I find anything interesting, I'll show you that as well. Catch you in a bit. So yeah, I just thought I'd show you what was inside there. It's an old uh, or an unused alarm cable. So this this house has been wired for um, an alarm, but it's never been one installed. So you see here, we've got all of the cables coming for that. And there's even a spare ready for it as well, but never been installed. And that's probably for where a detector was gonna go. Just another accessory I've got open near me, so again you'll see the earth to the front plate on this one. And again we've got uh, an earth onto the back box and that just loops through. So one of the conduct, one of the conductors, one of the CPCs, oh, focus, there we go, it's just been uh, looped through so it's not even a, a cut cable. So straight onto the front there and again it's sharing the same sleeve in. But the strap is a sleeved. There's, uh, no exposed copper at all and all of these switches and sockets have been been the same so i've had a good hunt through now popped quite a few of them off you know this is a prime example actually the decoration here so i have to be a little bit careful they've all kind of been painted in if you see on the edges so you'll come to take them off and if you're not careful being big lumps out of uh, the paintwork and make yourself very unpopular with landlords and letting agents so stanley blade and a bit of care will save your earache it's a good tip for people who are getting into inspection and testing of domestic property, um, make sure you, you're taking care with the decoration because the last thing you want is to be messing about. So I'm going to have a look at that spare now. I suspect it just wants a bit of tidying up and screwing back a bit better. So we'll get that done. And again, anything you do take off, make sure you're checking that it's nipped up properly. Um, you're not introducing danger or a fault. So you need to make sure your terminations are tight. Don't just pull it off and have a quick look at it and shove it back. Make sure you're... Um, checking that they're actually tight and sound and secure because that'll give you a good idea if you need to open up any more of the installation as well if there's stuff that's loose. These were fine as well. I mean, I'm not just going to keep showing you inside sockets and lights. Um, it's all pretty good nick. So we've just got a few initial observations to do with the cabling outside. Um, the, um, what else was there? While well, I'm running my brains trying to remember. This is why I normally have a notepad, because my memory is horrific. Uh, let's jump downstairs. So yeah, we had the outside cable in. Oh, the damaged uh, PIR. Bonding all appears to be in place. We've checked the suspect switch and socket already. Oh, there's that slightly dodgy TV point. Um, anything else that I have observed so far? Some of the accessories aren't quite lined up right but I'll straighten those ones out while I'm here everything seems to be working so I'm going to crack on now and run through the tests oh that's another one of those up there so you see it's another point for the alarm if anyone ever wants to add it nice actually the initial developers to do that um, it's maybe not the greatest bit of decoration in the old house but you know that was there wasn't it so that's all good and um, yeah I'm going to crack on with the testing now run through my dead tests get the live test done and um, I'll quickly talk through all of that in a moment Hi, so welcome back. I've now gone through the testing process and there's no issues at all that I've discovered. Um, the dead test is totally fine, so can I, can 
continuity polarity and insulation resistance testing is all good and I was expecting that would be the case based on what I've seen around the inspections and the fact the board was changed a couple of years or so ago. Uh, you know, you, you kind of get a feel for what you're going to see in the test results and that's what they're for. So the test results are supplementary to your inspections. So you form your, your inspections and then you, you back that up with your test results and um, that's proved to be the case here. I've not, not really seen any issue at all. So all of the um, end-to-end resistances are good, R1R2s are good and um, insulation resistance, bang on. Line and neutral together on the lighting circuit because I wasn't disconnecting all the LED fittings off the ceiling. Um, to do that, but otherwise I've done a full range of insulation tests because it's empty, why not? Um, live tests, ZS is marry up with what you'd expect to see based on the bonding conductors being connected and the ZE that I've measured and then the R1, R2s, you know, you know, they're consistent in what you're seeing so I'm happy with those as well and um, I've measured that at every accessory because I can while I'm here and it's empty, made sense to do that. Um, yeah, so the RCD trip times are all fine. Functional tests of the RCDs are all good. Functional test of all the switches and sockets is all good. And that's something you need to remember to do when you get here. Make sure you're checking what is and isn't working and what is and isn't working when you leave. So you're not leaving yourself open to accusations that you've broken something. And the other aspect of all of that is take photographs. So it's not just the electrical system. People will accuse you of damaging walls, decoration, floors. So get pictures. I do a little video now just walking out every room, closing the door behind me and all the way out of the property, lock the door, keys in the van, and um, that's me me done. If anyone's then saying that there's damage as a result of the work we've done, I can say, well, this is how I left it, that's that room, and um, we're not responsible, or we are responsible. So Always make sure you're doing that, note any damage that you see when you arrive. little tip there for someone who's worked around domestic rental properties in the past, because the one time you don't do it and you get stung, you'll wish you had. So, yeah, pictures and videos. Other thing is when you're doing your coding, remember that you are coding based on the regulations and safety. So your own opinion of what good workmanship should look like in every single installation isn't entirely relevant. While you are the inspector and you're giving your opinion on the installation um, in terms of your schedule inspections and application of codes and regulations, um, you can't just be doing that on the basis of what you want to see everywhere. So things I would love to see in every electrical installation, but the fact they're not there doesn't mean it's not safe and doesn't mean it warrants a code. Um, things I've observed on this one, and one you might have noticed I missed on the original walk around, and that's because I'm waffling away talking into my phone and not looking at what I'm doing, is in the meter cabinet, so there's exposed basic insulation on the uh, line tail, and we contacted the energy provider through the landlord to come and seal that um, meter up, because the meter seal's cut, and the um, supplier's fuse is cut, so they're coming to sort all that out, and to re-terminate the tail, so that's been taken care of. We've also got a C3 on the twin and earth that's outside and that's because whilst it's not showing any damage, damage from UV at the moment, it could in the future and I recommend it's improved. Um, if it was showing significant uh, damage due to being outside too long then obviously that code could be changed to a C2 but at the minute it's just slightly discoloured and it would be really harsh to, to code it any more than that. Um, some people would say it's even just a note. Um, but I, I'm, I'm applying a C3 on that one. And again, with the PIR that's outside, there was actually a crack in the top of that as well. So that's a C2, and I'm going to replace that this afternoon regardless. Um, so there was the front lens that was damaged on there and a little crack in the top and been water ingress. I suspect it's flooded and someone solved the problem by breaking the lens. So yeah, good fix. So that's getting changed. Um, what else did we have? Just trying to think now off the top of my head. So we've got that basic insulation in the meter cabinet. We have got the UV damage to the cable in outside and the PIR. I think that's it. I think that's it. Uh, if I've missed anything, I'll uh, I'll pick it up obviously in the report and certificate. I can't remember exactly what I've spoken about on the video so far just while we're waffling away. I think that is it. If I've forgotten anything, you know, apologies. Doing my best to film these videos. I'm not an expert at YouTube. I'm just trying to show some real world experience about on site and some of the things that might help others in um, doing a good job of it, really. I like to think we do a decent job of it. I'm going to get on now and produce the certificate, check through my pictures and test results, stick it all in, code it up appropriately, get it into the landlord and um, get that PIR changed. I'll believe it when I see it if the uh, energy suppliers and network DNO turn up tomorrow to sort that. Uh, out as they say they're going to, I would be stunned, but that's that's what I've been told by the landlord. 
and that's up for them now to, to get sorted out. Uh, and yeah, whilst I'm qualified to actually pull service views, and it's immensely frustrating they don't provide us a point of isolation in meter cabinets and at, at meter intakes, it's really annoying actually. Um, you know, I don't have permission to interfere with that equipment and I'm not going to. I've worked inside um, substations for Northern Power Grid doing testing in the past. Uh, I am qualified and I've done the course to safely remove service head fuses and I have the PPE to do it as well, but I'm just not going to because, you know, that's not been agreed with anybody and we shouldn't be doing it. So you either stick to those principles or you don't, and, and I do. Just, just my personal choice there. Primarily to ensure I'm setting the right example of staying safe for people who think you can pull those service fuses. Um, others do it, that's up to them. I'm not slagging them off, you know, each to their own. And yeah, I'm going to have a good clean around now. Um, tidy up my test instruments, get the cert filled, get it emailed over to the landlord, and uh, get on with sorting that outside, load the van up and bugger off, do the video filming myself leave, and uh, show that I haven't damaged anything, because I haven't. <laughs> so alright, catch you on the next one. I hope you found that useful and interesting. Sorry if it's been a bit of a waffle and gone on a bit long. Uh, I've done my best with it, and uh, yeah, cheers for watching. Right, so just before we leave this video, I wanted to say, if you are considering going into inspection and testing, especially EICRs, go for it. Um, don't be put off by some of the, the worries towards coding and regulations and how you can possibly understand or overdo it. You know, I've had lots of DMs across social media since I started Apprentice One to One. People saying those things, now they find testing inspection really difficult and they never think they'll ever be able to do it. Um, you know, it's, it's something that I really enjoy. I've always done it in my electrical career. Um, I kind of specialise in compliance works. It's not as complicated as people make it sound far from it. It's a really rewarding career, um, you know, or not even a career, really rewarding and interesting thing to do in your work life, even if you're not wanting to do it every day. Um, you know, go for it, believe in yourself, have the confidence that you can learn and understand it. There's people out there who will help you. Um, you know, the, the regulations themselves around inspection and testing are actually quite straightforward. Even some of the more complex installations, as long as you follow a program of works and you set out clearly with in those and your limitations of exactly what you're doing and use and have confidence in your engineering judgment to make those decisions on coding you won't go far wrong and um, yeah just believe in yourself you, you can do it anyone can do this if you're a qualified electrician you're more than capable of, of building in towards inspection and testing in the ICRs as well so go for it